This is the exercises video for lesson 2.3, which was our lesson on logarithms. So the exercises we will go over are here. They come from OpenStax Precalculus 2E, and you can see the ones I'll work listed here. So try them, try them, and then come back to this video. We'll go over the solutions. In this first problem, we want to state the domain and range for this function. Well, this is a great thing to think about. What do we know about logarithms? Maybe I'll write this in black. If we just had natural log x, this has domain 0 to infinity and range minus infinity to infinity. But what we really have here is a function composition. So what we need is what's inside the log must be strictly positive. So let's write this. We need 1 half minus x to be strictly positive. And I can, for instance, just add x to both sides. We have 1 half bigger than x. So what this says is x is strictly less than 1 half. So the domain of this function in interval notation, it looks like this would be all x strictly less than 1 half, which is minus infinity to 1 half open on both sides, really. Now, think about the range. Well, as x ranges over minus infinity to 1 half, we will fill out the full range of the natural log. And so the range of this function will be all real numbers which is minus infinity to infinity. That was the first problem. Now, next one, in fact, we have a few like this. We wanna use properties of logarithms to expand as much as possible. Okay, wonderful. The first thing I see here is a quotient on the inside. And so this will become a difference. We have ln a to the minus two sub minus ln of b to the minus four and c to the fifth. And my next step, well, I can really do two things. Here I have a power on the inside. And so this comes out in front as a multiple. So this will be minus 2 ln a. But also, right here, I have a product on the inside. And so this will turn into a sum. But don't forget, maybe I'll do parentheses. We're going to need to distribute this minus sign. So this will be ln of b to the minus 4 plus ln c raised to the fifth power. I really have, say, one more step. So let's recopy this first term, negative 2 ln of a. Now, we have a power on the inside. This will come in front as a multiple. But you see when I have my, my, minus, it's really minus 1 times minus 4. This turns into plus 4. So I will have a plus 4 natural log of b. And then here, if I just bring this power out in front, I'll have a plus 5 ln c. But don't forget, we must distribute the minus sign. So this will be minus 5 ln of c. And this is as simple as we can get over here. This is our answer to this number 16. Let me underline here range and domain. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next question. Once again, same directions. We want to expand as much as possible. The first thing I see is a product. So this will be the natural log of y plus the natural log of the square root. I'm going to go ahead and write the square root as a one half power. So I have y over one minus y. And inside the log, I have a power of one half. This power of one half tells me what to do next because power on the inside, we can bring in front as a multiple. So my next line, I have L and Y, and then I have plus one half, the natural log of Y divided by one minus Y. Now, really I have one more step here because inside of this log, I see a quotient. So this will become a difference. So this is the natural log of Y. We have plus one half natural log y minus one half 
a lint of one minus y. But maybe I will take one more step because I realize, you see, I have um, one half L and Y and another L and Y. So I can combine these two. But this will be my final answer right here. This is three halves L and Y and then minus one half the natural log of one minus Y. This is how I'll leave my answer here. Well, now we have a few that we're sort of doing the opposite. We want to combine into a single log, which is still using properties, but kind of going the other way than the first, the last two examples that we did. Well, 21, I see a difference of two logarithms. And so this can be combined as a quotient on the inside. This will be six X to the ninth power divided by three X squared. And then I can simplify what's inside. This is ln of, well, six over three is two. And then we have X to the, maybe I'll do this in two steps, would be nine minus two. This is properties of exponents. Now one more step. This is ln of two X raised to the seventh power. This is our answer here. Next one, 23. The first thing I see, I have two multiples in front. Here's a multiple and here's a multiple. And so I can bring those inside of the logarithm as powers. Here I have the log of X. Here I have minus the log of Y to the one half power. And then I have plus the log of Z cubed like this. Okay, well, maybe only a few more steps. Maybe I'll work with this here. I see a difference of two logs. And so I can turn this into a quotient on the inside. This would be X over, um, it's really Y to the one half. I'll go ahead and write this as the square root of Y. And then I have plus the log of Z cubed. One more step here. Now I have a sum of two logs. So I can write this as a single log where inside is a product. So I will have X times Z cubed and then divided by the square root of y. Both types of exercises are fantastic for practicing log properties. We did a few of expanding and then a few where we condense. Now, a few more questions. We're going to be solving exponential equations here using logarithms, very much like we did in the lesson video. Here, in this first one, I want to get e to a power by itself on one side. So this would be e to the minus 3k. This will be 44 minus 6, or e to the minus 3k is 38. Now, take the natural log of both sides. We have ln of e to the minus 3k will be ln of 38. Well, from here, you see left-hand side, we have ln of e to a power. We just get minus 3k. So minus 3k will be the natural log of 38. And now we can just divide. k is the natural log of 38 divided by minus 3. We have two different bases, so we are definitely not going to get the same base and equate exponents, but we can just begin by taking the natural log of both sides. Now, we use the same property on both the left and the right-hand side. We bring the power out in front. So x plus one ln of two equals two x minus one, and don't forget your parentheses, times ln five. Well, we had one like this in our lesson video. So what we want to do is put everything with the X's on one side and everything without on the other. But I need to distribute. So here I have X ln 2 plus ln 2. And this will equal 2X ln 5 minus ln 5. So let's subtract. 2x ln 5 from both sides. I have x ln 2 minus 2x ln 5. And this will equal, now subtract the natural log of 2 from both sides. This will equal minus ln 5 minus ln 2. 
The question is, what comes next? Well, really, we're almost there. I can factor an x out of the left-hand side. I have x ln 2 minus 2 ln 5 is this minus ln 5 minus ln 2. And my final step is just divide by this part. And we will have solved for x here. Negative ln 5 minus ln 2 and then divided by this, which is ln 2 minus 2 ln 5. I think I'll leave my answer like this. Last question on this exercises video. Oh, so you might wonder what am I going to do here? Because if you tried to get e to the 2x equals something over here, it will be a sum, right? We'd have e to the x plus 132. And if you take a natural log of this, it's going to be a problem because there's no property about distributing a natural log across a sum on the inside. But we can do something kind of cool here. So if you think properties, e to the 2x is e to the x squared. So for example, I can rewrite this as e to the x squared minus e to the x minus 132 is zero. And now you see I have something squared minus that something and a constant. This is something I can factor. It's sort of quadratic, except it's not polynomial because of the e to the x, but we can factor it very much like we would factor a quadratic. Okay, so we have e to the x and we have e to the x. Okay, multiply them together, we have e to the x squared. Now, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 132 and add to negative one. Well, let's try negative 12 and um, positive 11, okay? Multiply, we have negative 132. And add, we have negative one. So we have factored this. Now, what does this mean? It means that e to the x minus 12 is zero or e to the x plus 11 is zero. And we can solve for the x values in each case. Here it says e to the x is 12. And I can solve this. Let's do it. ln of e to the x is ln 12. We get x is ln 12, okay? Here is one solution. But what happens over here if you have e to the x is negative 11? Oh, we have an issue. So note that e to the x is always positive. Um, there's no solution over here. e to the x cannot be negative 11. Or another way to think about this, if you try to take the natural log of both sides, we would have ln of e to the x would be ln of minus 11, which you cannot do that. That's outside of the domain of the logarithm. So we just have one solution here. This was kind of a challenging one, but I think with this hint, it made it reasonable and it's certainly a great exercise. This is the end of our exercises. Thank you so much.